Seed Canary, hell of a name. Um, I'd like to know how you came up with the name. Uh, I know what a seed is. I know what a canary is. How do they go together? <laughs> Good question, actually. Um, so I guess I should start with, um, so before we were a business, before we were anything really, uh, we started as a single Discord server, um, okay. allowing small breeders to kind of trade and sell genetics with you know other growers, and then it kind of became a thing. Um, our original name was like Circle of Life or something. Um, <laughs> and then when I first made the business, once we started you know growing and uh, things became a lot bigger, uh, I was you know thinking of ideas, thinking of business names, and I had the hardest time. It took me probably about two weeks until I decided. Uh, to pick this name, and it was just, um, honestly, it was a high thought. <laughs> That's the best way I could kind of, you know, say it. Um, it was one of those things where I was thinking and brainstorming for, you know, like I said, about two weeks, and one night, I think it just kind of came to me, I was like, you know what, that's a good idea, you know, because it sounds good, it's memorable, it's also kind of like original, you know, it's not yeah. like um, something that's, you know, I guess copied, you know, mm -hmm. Um and it kind of does go together because, you know, birds, they carry seeds kind of, you know, and they, you know, travel with them and, you know, seeds drop from birds kind of. And that's kind of where I got it, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's awesome. I didn't even think I was when you were saying it, I was thinking, you know, OK, like you're showing you're sh like showcasing um, a lot of other people's genetics, like you're singing their song like a canary or something. But no, I like yours. Yours better, you know. You're, 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 <laughs> well, no, that's also a good point, too. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you could use that. <laughs> right. um, no, that's cool, man. That it is a memorable name. It's unique. It's um, I, I didn't hear about you until I I had picked up some of the miracle candy off of uh, out of a crop culture box. It was oh, one awesome. of the one, one of the perks uh, that you could choose, and I had never heard of you. And you know, a lot of times when when you have other you're not necessarily you're not a white labeler, you're making your own and you don't usually see somebody also sell somebody else's. Um right. so that was that was pretty cool to me uh when I saw it and then so I was like, oh yeah, you know that and I collect seeds too. You know, you never know when you're gonna want to try something different. So oh, uh, so I got I, I got you in there. So that's awesome. Um with your, I know obviously Miracle Candy. How many other unique strains do you have that are seed canary strains? Um, so the way that we kind of do things is we're based off um, quality and itself quantity. So we have we don't have many strains of ours. We probably only have about ten that we consider like signature strains where we will continue mm -hmm. breeding. And you know, keep releasing like every year. Um, so one of some of the unique ones would be definitely Miracle Candy is definitely on there. Um, Devil's Thirteen, Chicago Fire, um, Rave Candy. That's one. That's one of my favorites right now, actually. Um, Rave Candy, nice. And we have a few other that are coming. Uh, Devil's Dough that will drop again uh, next week. That's pure mission cross with Devil's Thirteen. Really, really narcotic. Uh, good for pain management, good for stress. One of those, uh, you know, end of the day type of smokes, uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I do like a lot of indigo stuff. I know the market does kind of aim for sativa, honestly. Um, that's what a lot of people prefer. Mm -hmm. But I kind of, I kind of, I guess, target more of the home grower that's also wanting this little best benefits from it, the, the plant too. Um, right. Just because the reason I kind of got into it was for pain management myself. Um, and Devil's 13 was one of my first strains I created that I spent two years before I actually released it. Um, and that's, I believe that was at, at F2 at the time when I released it. And that was a, it's not just one cross across another and I, you know, stabilized it. It's more mm -hmm. of multiple crosses that I bred into together and then found the final products that I then kind of saved wise more. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, the Devil's 13, what I really love about that one is the lineage goes from nine pound hammer crossed with um, Afghan skunk crossed with India Kush. And I crossed that set of, uh, you know, that's of parents 
I crossed that with uh, ADHD 13 hash plant, and it kind of made a really, really dank, old school, high yielding, uh, really, really good for like pain and just sleeping. Um, definitely couch lock is a uh, is a prominent fi- side effect from that one. <laughs> so yeah. if you don't like couch lock, I wouldn't suggest those 13 for you. Well, if you do, then yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Um. Uh, I I love my nighttime hits too. Those are you you can have both. Yeah, you know, like you right. said, it's geared towards sativa, but you can have both. You know, just got to recognize that something's gonna gonna lay you out. Um, exactly. But I I also so I'm I'm in New York. A uh, little time code, this is, yeah time code debacle. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so I have my medical card, and yeah, it's the like I have my hands hurt like hell. So that's. I've been in it for a very long time, but it's just been recently that I've been actually able to to like put myself out there and talk. I'm a I'm a people person, um, so it was always really hard to not be like, "Oh, hey, you guys want to come check these plants out? You want to come look at these <laughs> things?" But like, so the, the the medical aspect of it, even though it wasn't something i had been doing forever to manage pain that that pain and again i'm not debilitated but like that pain is what ultimately got it available for me a little bit sooner than the rest of the state so uh, i I hear i hear where you're coming and everybody that i've talked to i mean i've i've only done about 10 or 15 interviews for this first launch and everybody's pretty much come into it the same way whether it be pain uh i'll just say ailments you know it's it's everybody's coming from there it's not just people that are looking to get like blitzed all day long and exactly. turn around and, and are trying to push that sort of mentality on it it's everyone trying to you know focus on like you just did gave me information on what each one of those did and drop knowledge on people where they they might not have gotten it before because of the the stigma that's been around so uh, right. I, I appreciate you laying that out there because you know with bigger and if you're not a bigger company you do present as a huge company and it looks like you're huge um uh so if you're not good job but if you are good <laughs> job but, but so hearing that come from somebody that is well known you know, might make somebody you know that's watching on instagram that doesn't show their grow but you know follows everybody so you should go out there and show something and and through that you might have somebody say hey that that plant looks like it blah 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 you know just go check this or something they they could start learning things and i think that's one of the most valuable things in this day and age now it, it, at least in this space is education so that's why i was gonna i was gonna ask about um what what are your favorite like terpene profiles? Do you like the I'm I'm taking this to go to bed type type stuff, or are you more of a like an upbeat during the day guy? Uh, I don't want to say eager because when, right. when you're going throughout the day, like would you rather be at the point of the day where you're smoking the the let's get up and do something bud or the the into couch? Right. So personally, for me. Um, because I have a busy schedule during the week, I don't smoke during the day. Now, I usually do smoke daily at night, uh, especially just because, like I said, it does help me with management pain plus mm-hmm. help me sleep. Uh, I also have like chronic insomnia really bad. So um, that's why I like indica stuff that does really help me. Um, I wish I could smoke a bit more during the day, but like I said, I, my schedule does not allow that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I usually do do the indica stuff. Now, um, there are those moments where I want a more, what I will consider a uh, recreational type of campus, right? Because mm-hmm. in my opinion, there there's two, you know, sides of it. You know, there's, uh, you know, heavy indica dominant stuff that I would consider more as medicine than anything recreational, just because it kind of more or less is more narcotic, right? Like to right. pain medicine or something. You don't get drowsy, but it's kind of similar, right? Whereas you smoke, you know, a good sativa, like some kind of like really strong haze, you're going to feel those recreational effects, right? <laughs> um, yeah. You're going to be happy. You're going to be, you know, feeling it for sure. Um, so that's kind of like how I kind of categorize those two things. Um, I love both probably equally. Um, right now, it's just I'm kind of doing more indica stuff uh, just because it's kind of working for me, I guess, more better right now. <laughs> uh, but there are, 
definitely is those moments where, you know, you need a good team about the, you know, get your mood right, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I never, you know, I, I guess I had thought of it that way. I, I'd always just thought of like those indicas being those super high percentages. Um, but while a lot of times they are, they're they're really going to help you stop your day, <laughs> you know, right, right there. But you get to actually enjoy those recreational benefits with a little bit lower of a percentage uh, all around um, because you're you're more fluid. You're still up. You're still with it. Uh, and that that makes that makes total sense. Um, right. With, and with that and cannabinoids, really. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's uh, if you're if you're trying to have, I, I've always thought if you're trying to have a specific uh, experience, not like spiritual or anything, but like if you're going out to have a good day and, and you hit a little bit of, you know, like a sativa or something like that, you're going to have an even better day in my eyes because you you just did something for your brain and told your brain first off that i'm going to do this because it's going to be even better and having that knowledge between the two is something that people need to learn as well because if they're not and they're just going for those super high percentages those levels and they're yeah they're not going to have a, a real good time maybe they do maybe they do but you <laughs> maybe, know or maybe not. If, if, yeah if they <laughs> want to go sit that. on a park bench and look like you know somebody that sits on a park bench that's all geeked out then by all means um but that just doesn't seem like it's it's fun for anybody so having that education on on those as well it's I didn't start even again. I've been in the game for a while. I didn't even start learning about cannabinoids or really any of the underlying chemical reactions of it till about like three or four years ago. It was I was just doing it, uh, so I didn't have to spend as much money. So mm. I know it's possible to learn all of these things uh, rather quickly and retain them if it's something that you're passionate about. It's it's something that you'll retain. So yeah. Uh, and it's with, also one of those things where it's always, um, I'm still learning myself, you know, and no, that goes exactly. for everybody in the community right now because nothing is 100% scientifically proven about how the plant works just yet. You know what I mean? Right. That um, there's, but we do know they, enough that where it's like, we know enough information where it's helpful to kind of help, you know, I guess, uh, you know, help people find what they kind of are looking for, I suppose. You know, like if a grandma walks into the dispensary, you know, she, she might want some, you know, really strong sativa, right? But odds are she might want something a bit in the middle, right? Like something mm -hmm. that's more maybe medicinal or maybe something that's a bit, yeah, mellow. Um, mm -hmm. And having that information is what will kind of give that customer their, you know, experience. Because mm -hmm. if that, you know, say that, you know, maybe at the dispensary, <laughs> um, it's something that has like, say, 30% THC and it has no, you know, tolerance to cannabis hasn't smoked in the past four years, she might not have a plus experience, right? right. Um, <laughs> and that's just kind of how I've seen it. Uh, I know people who have, uh, you know, given, you know, marijuana a try, and they kind of thought, hey, you know, it's legal now. I think, you know, I'm going to try it. Uh, I think maybe it'll, you know, help me, you know, get through a day, blah, 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 blah. And they try it, and fortunately, they try something that isn't, isn't necessarily good for them you know it could be too yeah, strong like needed. really strong hybrid their anxiety gets really peaked right and they might not have a good time and they might not want to try it at all again right because they have a bad experience and that's what yeah. i kind of i don't want people to go through you know so like you said before knowledge is really it's really helpful <laughs> you know yeah. and I, I could say that i've actually you know even bit smoking for so long i've had bout, bouts with that anxiety like oh damn that's strong <laughs> like you know yeah, like you're you're, cool, you're yeah. fucking looking over your shoulder and you're in your kitchen and you're like god damn um right <laughs> is there <laughs> <a> shadow, <laughs> <or> whatever, <yeah. laughs> is is there any uh like dream or future cross you don't have to say future but dream crosses that in the back of your mind you're always thinking like man i would really like to see how something like this would come together oh yeah because i've never i've never done any actual breeding um or anything and that's that's where i'm going next in my in in my passion with this space um mm -hmm. but 
do I already have ones in my head like wow I would really like to see what this goes and this goes having done it already do you have like a I'm gonna do this type uh like yeah. list I don't need the names I but got like... <laughs> uh, I got many so one of the next ones that it, it probably won't be released until at least end of this year maybe even next year uh it's one of those things that's going to be definitely in the works for a little bit longer uh, mm -hmm. but it'll be uh Santa Marta Plumbing Gold across to our Devils 13. Um, because, you know, Plumbing Gold, it's a, it's a sativa, you know, basically pure sativa. Um, and I got the, you know, original seeds of that. Uh, I was very lucky getting them because it's really hard to find a real deal Plumbing Gold seeds these days. Right. A lot of what you find, you know, um, I, I don't want to say any companies in particular that are selling seeds. Well, if you right. took a quick Google search and you found, you know, uh, Columbian Gold with Feminized Seeds, I, personally, I wouldn't grow them, okay? Um, unless you really know the breeder behind it, and, and you have to trust the breeder, right? Uh, that's kind of just how it goes, but uh, that is a strain that I'm really interested in right now, just because Columbian Gold does have a lot of interesting cannabinoids that are uh, actually really good for not only just mental problems like depression uh also anxiety uh but also has pain uh cannabinoids are good for pain and that's what i'm still learning i can't mm -hmm. say you know 100 percent for myself because i haven't tried it just yet <laughs> it's still in right. the works but i'm hoping you know something good could come out of that cross uh being you know del 13 is a pure indica crossing over pure sativa um It'll, you know, eventually shorten down the flowering time of that cross, you know, with inbreeding. Um, and that's, like I said, I'm really excited for that one just because once I have it down to F2, ideally F3, then that's when I'll be taking uh, basically uh, terpene and cannabinoid test results and kind of see actual, actual data of that strain. Uh, because that's what I'm going to do with all the strains we have. Uh, that way, our customers can kind of see the terpenes and cannabinoids that are found from the flower from that strain that was grown. <laughs> uh, because that's huge. It is. <laughs> that's huge. Um, Pure Michigan. That's another one that I'm liking right now. A lot of people do seem to like that one, especially for I mean recreational too. But again, it is a good narcotic indigo hybrid strain. Um, right. So like Devil Still, for example, I, I really do like that cross. Rave Candy uh, is probably a perfect example of a stream that I was really, <laughs> uh, at first, before I even released it or anything, I was not nervous, but more or less curious to see how it would turn out because Devil's 13 is old school, classic style. Um, you know, those really big, long colas. Um, you know, people, you know, call them jockey dicks. <laughs> not sure if that's <laughs> something I can see on here, but yeah, that's absolutely. what they're called. <laughs> um, you know, just the really dense buds, and I cross that with our zoomies, which is apples and bananas crossed with uh, zoo runs. So that's almost like a designer strain, in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? So it's like the more high THC, more recreational strain, uh, has better bag appeal, quote unquote, because it has perfect buds, right? Um, and I crossed that with Dell 13, and I was unsure about it because there are two polar opposite types of cannabis, right? Um, <laughs> so when I first grew that one out, because, you know, that's something that we do before we really say thing and grow it out to make sure it's a good product, right? And right. then, uh, yeah, oh my God, the, the, <laughs> the phenotypes I found and we saw from that cross is absolutely amazing because a lot of the structure had the double, or a lot of the phenotypes found had the double certain structure, and it just produced some really... <laughs> super dense rock hard buds like i'm talking really rock hard and purple uh covering trichomes ha has like in between the candy and the straight up pink skunk aroma really hard mm. to wrap your mind around it <laughs> uh I but i do smell. i do love it um it was almost like one of those underdog screens right something that you think you're not too sure what you think about it you know and when mm. you grow it, it's like oh my god this is amazing it really impressed me 
blew my mind really. So that's why right now Rave Candy is kind of one of my not my favorites because they're all my favorites, but it's it's up there on the list. <laughs> right. Do you have a uh like a, a top five strains that are actually going out through the website right now um, th- through vendors and the whole thing. Like, do you see metrics like that on that website? Yeah. So it does kind of vary between each vendor. Um, it would be hard for me to s- describe certain strains just because like I said, it's, it really does vary because each vendor has like their own almost uh, top products. Right. And right, it's right, yeah. hard for me to come up with the top of my head, but I can say vendors, like vendors are doing really good right now. Um, Kind Genetics, uh, Kobe, Big Dog Genetics, uh, Spa Money's now with you, which is a retailer for Copycat Genetics. I'm not too sure if you heard of them. Um, they're all pretty big. Um, I think I mentioned Kobe's Genetics, I think, or Kobe's Organics, sorry. Um, like they're really big right now on the website. Um, like I said, it, I, I wish I would have had a written down this before the, the call of um, uh, like the, the products or the strains that are selling really good right now. Um, oh, I just don't have that information. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, ha- have you had any vendor come in at all, like recently, that's just like out of left field, never been around, and is just killing it? Um, hmm. so, uh, yes and no. So, usually, right now, how the market is, there are a lot of new breeders coming. There's a lot of new upcoming breeders that are just starting out. And the thing with that is it kind of saturated the market a bit. So, with all these new breeders, you kind of create this thing where a lot of seed banks, not just myself, just other, you know, uh, competitors, if you want to call them that, um, they know it's like a, just a huge, <laughs> uh, you know, upbringing, I guess, of new breeders. And it kind of flooded the market just a tad bit. So what happened is it is really hard for a new small breeder to kind of get known in this industry unless they kind of meet a couple of different things. You have to be really consistent in order to make a name for yourself as a breeder. And what I mean by that is if you're not getting sales right away, don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep posting. Keep adding new genetics. And after some time, you will be successful just because you have to get people to almost try you and stick with you in order to kind of get up there if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So with that being said, um, I know this isn't necessarily, I guess, the, um, I don't know if it's an appropriate answer, but uh, something that I think about was uh, Kobe's Organics. He's he's not a new breeder by, by all means, but he's been around for the past, breeding for the past 40 years. Um, he I talked to him so many times on the phone, and every time I talk to him, he blows my mind because, like I said, he's been in the game for 40 years, way before it was legal, right? So he has so much information, so much stories that no, a lot of new people haven't experienced just because of, you know, legalization stuff, right? So right. he, in my opinion, is one of the um, not over uh, underrated breeders. Uh, he kind of deserves a lot more hype than he has right now. He's definitely getting ex- exposure now. He's on multiple seed banks now. Um, he's been with us for the past two and a half, close uh, to three years now, I think. Um, and like I said, he definitely deserves the hype just because he's, <laughs> he's true to the game. Say his name one more time. Kobe's Organics. Sorry. Yep. No, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure everyone heard it at the oh, end yeah. too. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's awesome too. That's, is he one of your older, like not older in age wise, but like older vendors or is he relatively new to yeah. the Seed Canary website? Yeah, no, he's definitely, uh, like I said, he's been with us for two and a half, close to probably three years, and we're approaching four years in business right now. So he's kind of been with us close to the start, you know, um, mm-hmm. since we were pretty small. And he's always been a very uh, positive guy. Like, he's helped us, you know, get our name out there on his part, too. 
he helped me. He actually helped me source the uh, Santa Marta from the goal that I was talking about earlier. Um, and he said it's it's someone worth definitely checking out, um, especially if you're interested in the more older man race and like uh, I don't know, they're not that man races, but they're more of the old school screens like uh, right, uh, like Girl Scout cookies, uh, Grand and Purple, uh, Great Babe, I think. Um, he does do a lot of reading himself, like, you know, making new crosses, but he also um, reproduces crosses too, right? So, like, the Grand A Purple, that's a reproduction um, using the original stream or original seeds. Right. Right. So, does yeah, um, no, we'll check him out. do a lot of the, I'm going to check him out. Um, do a lot of the, the vendors that do seeds also uh, do clippings and clones as well? Uh, so it's about, uh, like maybe 40% also sell clones that are 60% are, are just seeds. Um, with clones, it can be, it's, it's a difficult, well, I don't, I don't know if difficult would be the word for it. So clones, it's hard because with the standards that you kind of need in the, you know, this industry, I guess, um, Testing, like HOVD pathogen testing, is kind of required. And some vendors just also don't really want to deal with the, what comes with it sometimes, <laughs> you know? Right. So the shipping clones is a bit more difficult just because you overnight it. You have to pack them a bit different. Um, there's always that risk that one might die, you know, on arrival. So it can kind of be one of those things where it's more, uh, a, a bit more stressful than setting out a for example, right. you know, because when you melt seeds, it's like, you know, a 98% success rate, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you, it's like we probably won't have them seized or won't have them damaged or anything. Uh, and there's a tiny little chance that they're, you know, could be, uh, you know, obviously you need to replace them and stuff. But with clones, it can kind of be a bit more of a headache. Um, so certain breeders that are more, I guess, uh, do you, you know, do you sell clones? Oh, uh, a lot uh, of them have their own. I haven't. Sorry. No, no, sorry. I thought you asked me a question. I must have misheard it. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, with clones, it's it's a bit more tedious and a bit more uh, work involved, I guess. But um, it's definitely something that is worth getting into if you do ever find yourself get into the industry and start buying cell phones of your own. Or even if you want to trade clones with your friends or whatever. Shipping right. clones is honestly easy. It, it, it is as long as you do it right, and as long as you ship it overnight. It's like odds are the customer's going to have a health clone, you know, when they get it. Mm -hmm. It's just on the off chance that they don't, or sometimes there are those customers that like to kind of play the game. I guess is what I call it, where mm -hmm. they try to get another one for free. You know, see, so you know, died when they got it, and that's something that we deal with a lot, unfortunately. Um, not yeah, a lot, it's but hard. And yeah, because it's one of those things where it kind of just—I don't know. Probably shouldn't talk about this on here, but it's almost right. like people, you know, mm -hmm. um, that people kind of take advantage of, and it hurts us because what happens is sometimes when we kind of see a pattern with the same customer doing the same vendors or multiple vendors, I mean, um, it's one of those things where when we put a stop on it or say, hey. So you've had so many problems with all these orders. Maybe I don't recommend, you know, seeing the first clones since all you know, all the problems you've had in the past. And then that's when uh that's when they start hitting on us, accusing us of, us of, of stuff, of course. And that's the probably the hardest part of business really is uh, trying to make every single customer happy, you know. Um that's something Sorry. that I've kind of you're right, because me personally, I mean, I, I think I'm a nice guy and I like, you know, everybody to be happy. And I think that's kind of something that I have to try to work with too. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, like I said, not every not every customer you can make it, you know? Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's difficult and you can't. It's even not that it's hard, it's like almost impossible to, to make. And there's always going to be somebody out there that wants to play that game with you, you know? Uh, 
I was reading an article I saw it on Amazon. They're saying like 40% of everything that they sell, they get returned. Wow. Um, and it's it's people using it till like the 29th day and they know it. You know, they know it. They're, but like you said, there's almost nothing you can do with the return policies that are in place. I, I get, it's a little bit different with right. you. I would take it because it's harder. You know, it's not like they're going to ship you back unless you ask them to. And that's, that's, that'd be hard to, you know, ship it back to me yeah. so I can, so I can scan it or something, you know, it's and then, then how much money Especially are you going to put into that stuff. tracking system? Um, exactly. what was that? Especially because like clones in particular, like all seeds too. Uh, those items we might be able to even get returned just because, say, say for example, they send the clone back and it was in, you know, their plants and stuff, and they have a virus. And mm -hmm. we take it, you know, and now we now we have the virus, right? Or right. If, say, say if it's seeds, and they send us back, you know, return seeds, and say if you opened it, it and you know <laughs> we sealed it or something, and then we sell that same pack to their customer, and then you know, boom. Um, so that's that's kind of the hard part, and with, you know, with policies that are in place, it's one of those things where it's like we don't want to hurt the good customers by changing policies to be like you know, no refunds, no replacements, nothing. So right. when people get actual problems, and they're kind of screwed, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it's one of those hard things to, you know, I guess find a good uh, solution. <laughs> Well, I've always understand. I've used to work retail too, so I've seen it firsthand. But people will, or they need to, um, eventually understand that you know when things like that happen and people abuse that that type of uh, called a system, uh, it, it's going to drive prices up. Because then everybody's got, you're going to be getting all of these freebie packs that you're sending out or replacement packs you're sending out because you're, you're doing the right thing by every customer, no questions asked type thing. And right. someone's got to pay for that, you know? So when prices yeah. rise up, you know, then it's everybody looking like, well, God damn, why'd that happen? Yeah. Even the people who are doing that to you, doing that to Amazon, it's like... <laughs> You, you make that bad, you know, and it, it'll suck. I hope that doesn't come to anything that you have to do because I right. sound like a jackass, but I hope you don't <laughs> have to do anything like that because uh, because that would suck not not just for the customers, but for you too, you know. It's, it's almost the same thing as turning around and selling that, that bag of seeds that you got back from somebody because you can't <laughs> really tell. It could ruin your name just as much as that could. And it's all because of a few bad eggs, you know, and I don't know the exact numbers, but like a few bad eggs could be anywhere between three and thousands, you know, depending on the scale. So I think, I mean, good job on that, that policy. I mean, making people happy definitely does, I think, go a lot further than making sure that you're holding everybody's feet to the fire you've got to sort of sometimes trust that people aren't going to be assholes um i've i just recently found out that this space has a lot of assholes in it uh i so i did a i did a talk with a, a guy who owns a hydroponic store in canandaigua just a couple towns away from me a retired police officer and he's like you wouldn't believe the amount of assholes that come in because i opened up a hydro store in a town that doesn't have one coming in and just say oh i'm gonna shut you the fuck down i'm gonna roll up next to you and shut this whole place down or everyone he this he's uh he's he's in law enforcement i can't shop there you know assholes right. complete assholes and i i never experienced any of that again new york didn't have that type of uh community about it or that that way of being able we, we could go into a hydro store no problem but you know we didn't have that that sort of openness there wasn't nearly as many people going into hydro stores back in the day as there are now that's what that's i guess what i'm trying to get at and you right. you learn a lot more about a bigger group of people when we were just sitting here with a small towns worth of 10 or 12 people that you knew that smoked or you knew that that grew to Wow, wow, half this town does it. And oh, fuck half of them are assholes. Damn. Uh, but, yeah. So it was it was really surprising to me. So I think maybe maybe like a year or two ago, if you would have said that to me, I would have been like, What? No way, right. man. I can't believe You'd be that. surprised, like, you know. It's... Oh, 
I mean, prices have gone up everywhere too, but it's not it's not like it's enough to make people turn into fucking monsters. Uh, no, greedy, not at all. greedy yeah. people. Uh, it is so surprising that that people do that stuff. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's I've, very surprising. Uh, I have encountered people that have, uh, I mean, threatened not only you know to shut us down, like kind of like you said, you know, trying to. They, I've also got death threats by just random people or people saying, you know, you better watch out, you know, you're starting to get uh, hot or whatever. You know, emails like that, you know, just like intimidating stuff. Um, I've also came across, you know, those people that will try to take advantage of the system, like I said earlier, trying to get as many, you know, replacements or refunds as they can. Um, chargebacks, I don't know if you're familiar with those are. Oh, uh, yeah. Customer. Yeah, those, that's the, the worst. That shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it it's uh, honestly hard for the business to win disputes because the customer usually has the leverage on winning them. Um, mm-hmm. It's just how it works with these banks. Um, so it, it's it can be stressful to say the least. But I want to say the good majority of our customers are always happy. Uh, it's probably about maybe fifteen twenty percent of those people that I got to deal with. You know. Um, yeah, that's- it's and probably maybe, like world averages too. It's probably 15, 20 percent of the world is. Yeah, <laughs> and it's unfortunate, you know. It's yeah. it's, it's uh, I mean, like I said, I've had people hard pressed on, you know, when like just acute, like for example, there was this one guy. Uh, I think it was like last year. I remember he made a big problem of it because he ordered it was through a sale. Um, and he ordered a clone from us, and he, you know he got the clone. Once he got the clone, he sent like probably fifteen different emails throughout the throughout the weekend. You know, we work Monday through Friday. During the weekend, we don't check, have our emails checked because you know we're not gonna stay nice. for the weekend, right? They need they need yeah. a break, right? <laughs> um, so you know, and he sent you know fifteen different emails probably throughout the course of those two days, Saturday and Sunday. Saying that you know the plant has uh, root rot, uh, has uh, pythium rot, has uh, uh, aphids, mites, uh, HLVD, the pathogen, but you name it, everything. I was like, oh my god, dude, <laughs> there's no way this you know a corn that literally came yeah. from our you know nursery has all those things. Like, it, it, even if it had one of those things, that would be a very rare thing, and that's something that we check literally. Every day, every other day, we, right. you know, we check the plants. We also test monthly for uh, all the viruses. We do a full panel test, and it's just something that we keep up on. And when we hear that, it's like there's no way you have all those problems right now, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. And what they did was when we were kind of arguing about that because, in my, you know, in my defense, I, I know what's going on in the industry. I know my employees. I know the plants, right? I knew it didn't have all those things. So I kind of, you know, very politely kind of called them out on it and said, you know, take pictures and kind of show proof and stuff. And that's when he went on our Discord and he went on all these forums claiming that, you know, we sent him clone that's like, you know, very unhealthy out of course, right? And that's kind of what I'm talking about with those certain customers that uh, you just can't make happy, right? So Mm -hmm. once I gave him a refund, for that because I just at that point I just wanted to be done with it. You know, I didn't want no more problems. I gave him a refund. And he he really shut up about it. No problems. You know, that's all he wanted really. Um and it's unfortunate that sometimes we have to deal with things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Do well do you get any uh just gonna jump right right out of that bad stuff. Um right. do you ever get any like special requests? um like like emails or i guess hang on let me back up first so if can any vendor sell clones on your website and if so do they send you a mother is that why it's in your nursery or did that was that person just specifically off of yours so when a vendor uh just join us the clones that they sell would be of their own mothers and that would be all coming from them directly right mm-hmm. so the clones that we sell ourselves they're in our own nursery and there are our own mothers and stuff. Um, so yeah, we don't take vendor uh, clones or nothing, nothing like that. Um, all mm-hmm. vendor orders are handled by the vendor, which makes it really easy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it, it's actually perfect because it kind of does also open the door where it's like, you know, the breeder is selling on our platform, and when a customer has a question about what the breeder is selling, they could contact the breeder directly and get their questions answered. And that's perfect right. in my opinion because that solves a lot of the misinformation that could be, you know, given out. Say if you know I was a seed bank, and you know there were a question about one of these seeds I had, and you know I'm not the breeder of it, right? So I wouldn't know. So that's where it's like I love that aspect of what we have because hmm. customers can kind of get you know answers that they actually are really looking for. Very cool. I was wondering. I was like, oh, like maybe he takes the mother. I was like, that's a lot of extra work for him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, do you get any special requests? Like anybody say like, hey um there's the a couple i guess a this vendor can you maybe contact them or b can you find this type of cross or make this type of cross um by any of your customers yeah that's uh it, it is kind of actually frequent that we get questions like that so um for example like the last one that pops in my mind was a customer who asked about uh you know red and uh, Swazi Gold asked if we had that because we did actually sell uh, Swazi Gold across a couple years ago, um, which we, we, we still have seeds, uh, but it's like more of a, we need to reproduce it before we, you know, have seeds to sell, right? Um, right? So we do get requests like that and also requests for things that we don't have. Um, OG Kush is really, really soon to be popular right now. A lot of customers are asking about that. They want to find the, like, the real deal of OG Kush. Right. Um, and that's something that I'm kind of working on getting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it is uh, something that does happen quite frequently, I'd say. Yeah, I, was, so I was just wondering, seeing like a lot of that lately um, on some of the sites that I'm just going through on some of the Instagrams, uh, by special request in like the header or whatnot. I was like, huh, I wonder if that means that like they just heard it or they've actually had people coming in. So I figured I'd ask you if that cool that's that's cool that that you're actually doing that for people who are looking for it though i mean it'd be nice to have your own og kush you know to be able to sell as well too so that's sweet right i mean um, my idea is i mean I'd, I'd love to get as much genetics as i can that way i'm able to kind of reduce things and kind of keep things you know going right um because a big a big part of me is really uh you know i guess i guess it's important for me that we also preserve these genetics, right? Because throughout years, things get lost, you know, mm -hmm. say, say a breeder from like, you know, 20 years ago, something that was you know, really sought after, um, say regular seeds, right? And all those seeds are probably all used up, but there's some people that pull on to those seeds and then they reproduce it and that strain almost comes back, right? Uh, back into the market and, or it could get lost forever. Um, that's something that, you know, does happen. And if you're looking for, like, you know, a lot of the older genetics that are around, sometimes it can be hard to find the real deal thing because, you know, um, it, it, like I said, with time, uh, as time goes on, it's hard to get the real, the real mm -hmm. stuff at the end of the day. Um, yeah, that, so that's why I, I like collecting too. That's... Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I got lucky. There's, um, I grew up with a lot of people here. There was more than 12 that smoked and did all that, you know, but uh, I, I just reconnected with him and he's since been out of the game and all that. So we got talking and he had sort of the same mentality that we're talking about, you know, preserving the genetics. So he's been, he sat on him and sat on him and sat on him. And he, since we'd been talking, I was like, you know, this is something that I'm starting to get interested in as well, you know. How would you think about, you know, maybe me acquiring those? So it's like, I call them legendary strains, you know, um, original packaging, you know, the the original container, you know, you'd have to really grow, th again, 15, 20%, but you'd have to really go through and want to be an asshole to, to <laughs> forge, like, I, I'm talking like two shoeboxes full of just original packs of and everything from, like, sticky glue to, to Slurricane. I think there's th Slurricane 3 in there. Uh, there's tons of other ones, like, from Capulator, all in-house genetics, all wow. of them, TNT, tons of... So, and that's all... I'm not obviously popping every one of those right now. It's It's... 
I'm not saying we waiting can, for the right, right time. Well, yeah, fuck. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. I've got a buddy's um right now going out in my tent. I'm I'm doing some hunting on his Spartan cherries. It's a local guy. He uh crossed King Leonidas and Trop cherries, I think it was. I'm probably fucking it up, but he calls them Spartan cherries. So I got those going right now. But yeah, I just look at the seeds. You know, I made my own little catalog, felt real cool about it. And I was like, oh, I can't wait till I want to drop some of these. But then I was thinking at the same time, you know, I can't wait to see what comes to mind. Like a lot of them are reg seeds, you know, and by design, that's what you're supposed to do. You're, you got to go through, you got to find them, find a good male. I'm not going to kill it. You know, I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, try to get it to an yes. F2, F3, and then maybe maybe then release it, you know, and then everybody else gets to enjoy something like that that hasn't been seen for a while. Now, I don't got any, like, Acapulco Gold or Maui Waui seeds, but, you know, so these things aren't the Not oldest yet. in the world. <laughs> well, right, no, yeah. I mean, if you right. keep looking, hopefully you can find some, but if you, if you, it's got to be reputable, you go, and I'll drop them because I, I really don't like, uh this this bank um but supreme i i've gotten white label seeds from them before that were yeah. complete shit you know oh you said that people would love to get the og kush it's coming back well i had got some i had a whole entire fucking room they were all uh males <laughs> yeah i bought them uh, off them <laughs> yep and i i wasn't even sure after oh, i looked fems. at them yeah well they were supposed to be fems yeah all of them turned into males or were males and i asked them about it and they're like oh no your order was so big you might have like put the wrong ones in i was like no i'm like yeah, it's right you I only got three of them i'm not gonna like misplace the three you know it's there's yeah, three right. of them it's not 50 of them <laughs> yeah, and i lost so, a couple yeah, exactly. the, i didn't buy just one and it fell into a bag of the hundred or something it's i bought three they're like oh okay well um can you send us pictures and i was just like whatever dude no i'm not gonna and it's so the it, autos did it with me from there i got fems that were supposed to be autos that were just photos it's like you you don't know when you're not getting that real pack you know or you're seeing that that person's person that company's name next to it that's that's sort of your your authentication you know it, it it'd really be that the website or the the provider is one of those 15 20 percent if they're just throwing random shit up on the website so uh, it's it's hard to to find old ones so i would really like to if i could you know find some og some hindu that'd be awesome to sit on it for 20 years oh yeah uh, that's uh <laughs> I, I feel that same passion <laughs> um it's like i said i'm a collector myself and it's one of those things where it's like i'm always looking for new stuff i got a lot of stuff that i've been sitting on that while to grow but i'm always looking for more just because of the chance that i want to grow it right <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's one of those struggles that i think we all kind of deal with as a grower of we all want more seeds but we can't grow the mouth that we really want to right um yeah. And My, especially when it comes to finding those old stuff, it's it can be difficult. And trusting the breeders is key because, like you said, it's free. the mm -hmm. white label stuff that's not good when you buy feminized seeds or what's supposed to be feminized seeds and turn it to be males. Dude, they were in like Obviously, nickel bag bags, bags right, right? <laughs> with like marker on it. Yeah, like fucking. As soon as I looked at, it, I was like, this is fucked. <laughs> My wife said the right. same thing. Like you said, so people who are uh, like grow growing hobbyists or growers um even like out outside with just regular flowers they actually have two hobbies buying seeds and then planting seeds because they never happen together <laughs> so <No. laughs> uh, so yeah no i i definitely know what you're saying it it does knowing that you have those and building it's like trading cards when you were little or like pogs or something it's it's almost ha it gives you a sense of nostalgia at some point because you're looking at some old things you're like oh wow that's that's a 15 year old seed it might not work oh but maybe it will maybe it will. right let me get it is there a testing plate like a uh, service you could get your seeds tested to see if they're still viable is that a uh, thing? well so i don't know so Kind of, but not really. So there's things that you could do to increase the viability of those seeds. So 
say you have seen from 20 years ago, and it's something I've done personally. Uh, it was a screen called Granny Panties, and I wish I still had that screen because they probably grew them all out, and unfortunately, I don't have any more. But um, they, they were really old seeds, and I, I was really worried that they wouldn't germinate just because I got them from a friend, and he had them stored in his drawer for like you know years and years, like next said 20 years or so. And obviously, they, they weren't kept in the freezer or nothing, so I knew that was kind of a factor in it. But I used uh, hydrogen peroxide with some water. And I kind of saw them being there a bit longer. Uh, I kept them in the water for 24 hours, which I typically don't do. I usually try to do eight hours, and I transfer them to a paper towel. Um, but for those, I left you know, a little longer, and they did crack. Um, now, granted, I didn't get all of them to germinate, of course, but mm -hmm. I did get a few. Um, now, a new thing that's kind of been you know, starting, I guess, is tissue culture. Um, now, you could use seeds for tissue culture. You could put them inside the... Uh, the medium like directly um and that is kind of similar to if you were to take a cutting and put it into the media it'll almost uh you know it'll root kind of like a clone but almost like in a dark cup like if you were growing uh like mushroom stuff right uh right. so it's kind of uh it's interesting that's something that i'm getting into as we speak um i i'm just not i'm not fully knowledgeable just yet to really you know i guess talk a lot about it just because I'm still learning, but I know enough about it to where it's a really interesting new concept of preserving genetics because with these tissue culture vials, um, or, or not vials, but uh, cups or containers, uh, you can kind of keep basically a clone for a lot longer than you could a typical, you know, root clone in like sea rock, right? So you can mm -hmm. keep these vials for up to three to six months before you have to transfer them to a bigger size uh, media. So preserving genetics or preserving, you know, uh, cuts of, you know, mothers can be really, really, uh, you know, taken advantage of by doing tissue culture. Um, so that's kind of something I'm kind of getting into right now. Um, I'm hoping it does work out in my case like I want to because then I'll be able to keep a lot more <laughs> genetics, of course. Uh, right. But we'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, no, that's very interesting. I've... I've... I know exactly what you're talking about with with the cultures, the agar and, and the mushrooms. It's it's pretty wild watching them do that. So I can only imagine how wild it would be and new, like new wild, visionary wild, wild west type shit to to see that with some some pot. Um, so the last couple things I have just to like really talk about are like community things, and I I like what you're doing with that uh, great grow season event, the best photo of 2024. Um, oh, yeah. I, I did notice on there, like has to be purchased from seed canary. How do you police that? So the way we kind of, I guess, have it set up is, um, so we'll take the, uh, submissions in like, proper, right. So when, you know, a person is, you know, sees some photos of, you know, stuff they have either growing at the moment or of stuff that they are harvested. If they were to win, we would ask them to kind of show like a proof of purchase. So if they bought from us or we do have some of our like our own strains on uh, multiverse beans um, and soon to be seed sellers. So if they were on one of those, you know, they purchased on those sites and those have to show like a, you know, order confirmation or a screenshot of their, you know, email. And then, it, you know, as long as they have it, then there'll be a letter. Because, um, yeah, otherwise it would be hard to tell which photos are actually, you know, real. Um, or if you know the customer just you know found picture online and took that and mm. said it was a humans or something, right? So that's kind of where I kind of found you know the in between of uh, I guess policing it, you know, uh, right. because yeah, it's it would be difficult if I didn't have some kind of <laughs> uh, standard or requirements, I suppose. Uh, right. Because yeah, I I, I want to make a fair competition, of course, you know. Yeah, I didn't I didn't dig into it a hundred percent probably the better the best i could have so i was i didn't know if it was like um the best photo of we've sent you specific stuff um and you have to use these things uh, then the pictures have to have oh, whatever yeah. in them or, or not so so that's that's cool do you plan on doing um future events like this or have any other ones that are different in mind Oh, yeah. So it's something that I'm definitely trying to do more of. 
So like on Discord, for example, it's not necessarily like an event or like a competition, but we do have like monthly giveaways or also like just frequent giveaways that are weekly. We have a lot on our uh, Instagram too. And then through our website, or we have our own separate giveaway. I think we entered through the email address. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do give a lot of seeds away for free just to kind of help the community get more seeds, I guess, if it makes sense. But as far as like competitions go, uh, we do have a couple more planned. Um, I'm not too sure if it's going to happen after this competition is finished or if we're going to have like a separate, like, uh, you know, solo look up challenge or something uh, mm-hmm. sometime coming soon. It's kind of up to the debate right now. But we, we, we definitely do want to start incorporating more, like, you know, challenges or fun games with seeds or just uh, things to kind of do with the community, you know, fun little things like that. Right. Do you. Um... Again, I haven't dug in too deep. Do you do you can your vendors make their own sales on their products? Um, so let me see. Um, so what do you mean like sales as in like? Uh, so I know like like, like if you buy two, you get you get two or um, oh, gotcha. like things like that. Or is it like would they reach out to you and say like, hey, I'd like to offer this um as a thing and then it would go through you uh, or like do they have the ability on that site to do it right so they have the ability to have their own different types of freebies or promotions <laughs> now sometimes as long as we get wind of it or as long as the vendor reaches out to us we'll actually make a banner and we'll post our promotions page of whatever promotion <laughs> we're doing that way everybody kind of knows and it's not too confusing now a lot of the times sometimes vendors don't do that and they'll just do it where it's like you know once you buy the item or if you look on the product page it might say the type of freebies that you know that item will come with um or sometimes the vendor might have like private uh promotions where it's like you know on their instagram and they say you know check out my secondary store um mm-hmm. you know i'm doing a buy one get one free and then those customers you know they order and then for that you know time period you know they get the little pack or whatever so it's kind of a we're still working out kinks with that. We want to be more available to us, I guess, because if if we know about it, I guess um, it's easier for us to give them more sales because then we can actually promote them and put in our newsletter on Instagram and really kind of push sales for them. So we're trying to make it a bit easier for them to kind of have that, I guess, access to uh, almost make the banner through the website using a third party like uh, editing app. That's something we're trying to still figure out on how to kind of incorporate in our website. Well, that's something mm-hmm. that we really, really want to do because that would be, it, it would be amazing <laughs> uh, once we kind of get worked out because, like I said, it'll kind of help them get sales. It'll help our customers know who to kind of order from, who's having the best sales. And it would also kind of be less, uh, I guess, less work for us because the vendor will be able to kind of publish that banner using the like, same required dimensions of the banner. Um, directly to the website without us really having to do much about it, if that makes sense. So, okay. definitely something that will be done here soon. It's, it's in the works. We have like a uh, stage website right now. So, we're kind of like making all that stuff on the back end. Um, and then once we have it all figured out, we're going to push it into the next update. And then the final, I guess, uh, we want to call it like basically, then all that new stuff will be there. Cause we do have a lot of uh, <laughs> upcoming like features that we plan on doing uh, in the next couple of months, such as like I guess like, promotions, but also yeah. like new, uh, I guess new abilities for the vendor. Uh, one of them would be for giveaways. We're trying to do it where vendors can have their own giveaways too. So like it'll be like you know if you click on that vendor's page, if they have a giveaway, there's a box right there saying you know at giveaway. And they'll have like information into it and you know they can enter and it'll just kind of be more kind of like if you were to buy from an ebay seller right they have their own products right. and they have their own shop right kind of like that where it's more individualized if that makes sense right. i know i'm kind of rambling uh, no that's that's very cool um that's i sort of leads into what i was going to ask and you might have already heard of these guys but i feel like they they sort of make your business um better in the aspect of people can germinate seeds at a, at a much better rate than like plastic uh, 
plastic bag and paper towel. Uh, have you heard of Root Nerds? I have actually. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't it's tried that product yet myself, but it's it's interesting, uh, and I like their it's, concept with it because it's legit. It man. Offer it's, like a foolproof way of germinating, you know. Yeah, I had uh, on those Spartan cherries. I had a hundred percent rate on those, but then after that, uh, popped some some of those older ones. Uh, it's at my brother's house. I don't remember the name of it, but I think they were ten year old seeds, um, and all of them. I think it four popped they were they're great they got that cloner attachment to it uh yeah no they're gonna be coming with me cool. to um the new york cannabis home growers championship in basem new york in june um i just i can't talk enough about this thing it it blew my fucking mind that this device i call it the weed dutch oven like that this this thing's <laughs> out there and it there's not another one like it. Like I couldn't believe it. Right. I'm, I'm not saying that. Wow, I can't believe you're you're still making money and no one's tried to steal your idea. I just can't believe that no one's had that idea ever. Um, I, right. I they get it from a I guy mean, in South Africa who uses it for peppers, but like this dude just had all local to South Africa. It was all done down there, and they just heard wind of it. Uh, because of their own troubles germinate and it's like wow they said the same thing like i how come this has never been thought of and i don't know i it's sort of like thinking about it it's like almost i'm gonna tell them to reach out to you and maybe you guys could work together on something because you know, you're, you're right. you, you know have if you're gonna in the future have like sort of like individual individualized stores slash pages for for those vendors maybe they'd be interested in coming on board with you too and that would be beneficial again for both of you they could people who didn't even know it are getting seeds and like oh have you thought about this oh shit no i haven't thought about this let me try that out or maybe a vendor comes in and says they got old ass seeds and aurora's there plus there or something i don't know i was just thinking right. about it i was like wow that would be a, a a really good fit and i didn't think about it till Till we were talking about older seeds because i guess no, that, had definitely 20 year old that. peppers germinate uh in right because that thing. that is amazing actually I, I i didn't think about you know partnering with them but i do see it being actually it could be really beneficial for both of us because you know we're in the seed business that that's kind of for seeds right and mm -hmm. it would also help customers you know have a foolproof method of germinating because Sometimes it's not the seeds that don't germinate, right? Like one, not necessarily the seeds that don't germinate, but sometimes it's because of user error. So Correct. some, you know, newer, you know, uh, less experienced growers might, you know, put them on a heat pad at full, you know, full max um, and just fry the seeds, right? But not knowing that's, you know, that's a problem. Um, I, I've done that myself, you know, learning. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had my... Uh, my uh, errors, I guess. <laughs> um, right. yeah, so that have. is something that could be actually really uh, helpful for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, no, it just popped into my head. Uh, and so the, the last part, really, um, is I'm super big on community involvement. Um, not not really going out there and putting out, yo, come, come here and smoke this, smoke that, but getting people in this space to talk to each other. Um, I just started doing like at least little interviews to like six months ago to try and a get myself out of the box, talk to other people, learn a little bit myself, but also be able to put these things out there for other people to learn other people to maybe go search on youtube go search on i have a website um if if you do want the file after it's edited it's yours you know i mean you're awesome. you, you own part of this too i you can have this for your site you can do whatever the audio file the raw whatever um i, I just want people to find information a lot easier that they that they might not have been able to find um, and if it's everywhere and the information's good, then I don't see a lose in this situation. It's an hour and probably be another 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes for both of us. And mm. 
I hope you had a good time. I had a good time. No, I, I don't did. think that anybody that listens to it's going to say like, "Oh, I just wasted a fucking hour of my life." <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> right, That'd right. Be pretty I sad mean, for both of us, if so, yeah. but. <laughs> and, and and I'm not trying to make money off it either. So that that makes it even more sweet to me because if I pulled you away from work, I apologize, but um, no, I'm no. <laughs> I'm not doing it with the with the thought of I'm going to make. $80 off of this or a hundred dollars off of this. So it's not pressure to me. I don't, I don't need to make the money on this because I do work. And a lot of people in this industry do work in addition to their, their passion, you know? So mm-hmm. it, I, I don't know. I just don't see it as like, uh, I got to get up here and I got to do this right now. It's more of a oh, sure. sweet. Yeah. I'm waiting. I, yeah, I can't wait to go sit down and have. I was sitting here an hour early because I got the shit mixed up. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah, no, I found shit. About that. I think that so, was, uh, yeah, error on both four parts of the uh, time <laughs> some differences, you know, I didn't think that right. into account. But yeah, no, I found I a, a lot of the people online are in Central. That I that I've got on my really? feed at least or in central, yeah. And see, I, I don't for me, know why. it's always be uh, a lot of people are on Easter time, so it's like <laughs> almost uh, uh, two different, you know, uh, I don't know, not issues, but what you want to call it, two different problems, I suppose. <laughs> so for me, like most yeah. people, it's Eastern, uh, whereas you know, for you, Central. But that's awesome, though. I like I said, I, I definitely love doing the interviews and podcast stuff. That's why I, I made that post on Instagram. Um, just because I want, we want to be more out there. We're very transparent with what we do. We love what we do. Yeah, we are a business, right? So we do, we do it for money, right? But it's also a part of me and myself. I love what I do. I love the plant. I love the culture. I love the community behind it. And I, I've been growing for since I was fourteen years old, technically. So I, I just, I, I have a lot of experience, and I want to kind of get my knowledge out there. I kind of want to, you know, explain what we do and our side of things, right? Uh, that way, people kind of understand us, right? Um, and uh, like I said, I I want my knowledge and stuff that I know about breeding or growing uh, to be out there for people to learn about. Um, just because, like what we mentioned earlier, knowledge and having the information out there to learn these things is really key for people to uh, continue, I guess. Uh, improving as generations go, you know, our kids and stuff once they, right. you know, <laughs> are doing what we do, right? So, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what it that's what it comes down to. I mean, I'm not again, I'm not promoting that I go, I got a three, five, and a 12 year old, I'm not promoting this, <laughs> right? And smoke, you know, but it, <laughs> no, when no, the time no, no. comes, I don't want them to have to go find it from some dude, and, and this is not true but some dude in a trench coat on the corner of the street selling <laughs> eights you know like that right. like sesame street i got eights um <laughs> so I, I i'd rather them a if they can't come talk to me because again i'm i'm very open they don't know but I'm, I'm very open and i won't hide it if they ask but i hope that they can come and and ask for that knowledge of all the stuff i've accumulated over the years or say like Hey, how do I do this? And I can point them somewhere that I I know I've been able to get information. There's a lot of fucking forums out there, and a lot of people just talking jib jab. Um, yeah, it, it's also, just as hard uh, to find good knowledge as it is to find reputable uh, genetics. Exactly. We also break away from that stigma too of you know, a cannabis as a you know, quote unquote, you know, some kind of illegal drug, right? Because a lot right. of people, a lot, well, so many people I've talked to. You, feel that way about cannabis that they're like you think it's still like a legal drug and that medicine is safer than you know cannabis because cannabis is quote unquote a legal drug right or if even if it's not legal in the state it's so it's a drug uh which right. is you know that's wrong beliefs but in my personal opinion i see cannabis as a lot safer than any most types of medicine out there unless you need it to live or something right like some heart medication mm-hmm. or something but you know as far as like you know pain medicine goes and uh, you know, anxiety medicine and trinkle, all that stuff, muscle relaxers. Cannabis is a million times safer than any of those medicines because cannabis yeah. really doesn't have too many long term effects. It really doesn't yeah, impact I mean, by smoking. Medicine. It's the only bad thing people can cling to. Right. Really, I mean, it, it is. It's the, only, it's the only thing that makes only any thing. part of that plant bad. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, no, it, 
it does <laughs> blow my mind and that's i this is actually one of the the episodes i haven't really said the word stigma as much dude like that's i can't believe it i i am make sure i make my own little t-shirts with weed buds on them and i wear them like my my in-laws fucking house i wear them around town <laughs> i dude i don't care i don't i don't want people to think that I, i'm a fairly fucking accomplished human being you know like i've i've i live comfortably and i'm not sitting here and for lack of a better way of fucking putting it, I don't got a needle in my fucking arm because I got a right. medicine that I had to take because my leg hurt. Exactly. And, and that that's how it fucking happens. You know, you get, you get addicted to these opiates and eventually you're trying to find something because it's a chase. It's a fucking chase. And then yeah, you got, by mean, the time you do it, you either got a straw up your nose. Well, I guess that's a different side, but you either got a needle right. in your arm <laughs> or, you're fucking, or you're cooking a spoon up and it's... Exactly. It's just sad to see these, when, uh, yeah, pills that kill you, you know, or off the street, and that's something that hits home to me because, like I said, I, I didn't start using cannabis for pain, like you know, growing up. Of course, I, you know, when I was fourteen, growing weed, I, I wasn't using it for pain then, but mm -hmm. but as I got older and had my, uh, I have nerve damage in my face and stuff, and that affects me eating and stuff. Sometimes I'm in a lot of pain, so I don't have an appetite, and that's what cannabis helps me with. Is it helps me get my mind off the pain, and also gives me that appetite, so I force myself to eat. So that's where it really helps me because otherwise, you know, because I was on pain cures, like open pain cures for, you know, on and off for four years, four years you know. So I kind of got to experience that negative side of what's going on in our country right now. Um, mm -hmm. Now, luckily for me, it was very, very minor. Like I never had, you know, my arm, don't, nothing like that, nothing crazy. Yeah. But, you know, being prescribed addiction pain killers does have its consequences. And, mm -hmm. If you're able to use marijuana as an alternative to not use those, that's the best thing you can do, in my opinion, because yep. those pills will kill you a million times faster in, in a very bad way, and a, cannabis will not. You know, so that's my opinion on it. Cannabis is great; it has anti-inflammatory values. It's great for pain, great for sometimes great for anxiety. You know, if you get yeah. the right. <laughs> yeah, right, it right depends strength. on what you got going on. <laughs> Otherwise, um, yeah, you might have more. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot cheaper like both like physically and financially as well you know if there you could i know people i grew up with people who were buying like uh, what do they call them, like zanny bars or whatever the the oxycot it's like five six bucks a pill and right. i'm sitting here with my eighth for forty dollars it's lasting me like three <laughs> days and it, they've got to buy seven or eight of these things, you know, or, you know, it, ugh, it's, it just, yeah. Right. And after that, and it's, they, they, they can't family, afford the medical because the fucking, yeah, you know, they, yep. their insurance doesn't cover it. Oh, you can't get another refill until blah, 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 blah. And then they go out and that's when they go out and looking for it. But like, well, I don't got your, your smorgasbord of fucking pills, but you know, I got this thing that's just as good. And it's exactly. it's not it's not just as good <laughs> when all they could yeah. really do again if you need if you need medication to live you got your bones oh, sticking absolutely. out of your out of your leg or something yeah you know take take right. take yeah. the Vicodin or something take you know, go <laughs> at that point uh, yeah <laughs> yeah but if it's something that you could. It, you know, like a broken finger, maybe the the first day. I don't know. Like, and then after that, just try it. Like, if people would try, I, I mean, I quit cigarettes sort of that same way. I quit cigarettes with marijuana. Um, it's just I I I definitely doubled up my intake of marijuana during that time because it was they sort of went hand in hand, and it was just like, oh, I got to smoke. Nope, I'm gonna go outside and smoke a bowl. <laughs> but like, that's the most addictive drug in our nation today: to fucking nicotine and marijuana cold turkey right. shit for me i was already doing marijuana so you can call it cold turkey because i didn't you know i didn't take anything else that i wasn't already taking to do it i just stopped uh so i it it, that, that's, it's an addiction breaker as well if you can get by the fact that you're smoking it or go spend the money and and buy the gummies or go spend the money and do the vaporizer you know of course it, it's not that much it's not that much of a <laughs> I'm not doing it's not like rocket fuel like those what are like the Newport filters everyone said there used to be like rocket fuel in the filter or something. <laughs> That's why when you smoked it after you after you got high you got 70% higher. So wow. I, like 
Yeah, they, it wasn't true, obviously, but like that's the type of shit. Right. Like you, and people didn't care, like it, because it was a cigarette. Like you expected that. Like, oh yeah, sounds right. Like, right. I don't know. And, I, and I can you really think about it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. but you know, it really makes you wonder, though, that you know, cannabis was, was such you know demonized all those years, and so illegal, and it's not necessarily addictive. I mean, it's not addicting at all. My opinion, maybe have it for me. Yes. We can yeah. be habit for me. Anything can anything be can be habit for me. Yeah, like but your phone. It's not addicting. <laughs> Whereas the, the stuff that it was legal, like you know, all the pharmaceutical painkillers that are addicting, the, the tobacco and nicotine, alcohol that you could buy at any kind gas station, all this stuff, you know, that's okay, right? But the mm. one thing that isn't going to get you addicted, that's bad. So that's the concept yeah. that I always think about, you know. They're not even scheduled. They're not scheduled anything. I know we just got it moved down to schedule three, but cigarettes and yeah. alcohol aren't even scheduled. It's and they should be. <laughs> yeah, and it's insane. Opinion. Like yeah. swap them around, and I, I'd like to see where the nation goes. You know, it's uh, what con- what state uh, just released some information that there has not been an increase in DUI. Uh, is it DUI? DUI related offenses since the legalization of marijuana in that state. I don't know what the state was, but that it, that just goes to show you. You know, it's it's not something that a hundred percent of people out there are looking to abuse. It touches back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, like everybody's not doing it just to get fucked up. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's people who are doing it just to have a good time. People might have a hard time having a good time. And they seem like right. they're stoners. No, they're just doing it so they can deal with the fucking world because they don't want to take a fucking pill. So, exactly. You know, and but that, it's go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, and and yeah. that's where it's like you know, it's it's definitely like I said it hits home to me too. And that's why, like, with the signal that you know, some people say with me, yeah, I try to break that. You know, I try to. I, I never encourage people to go out and smoke weed for the first time. You know, but. I all I say is, you know, if you're interested in it, you know, do your research. And I would say that, you know, marijuana is safer than most things that are offered by pharmaceutical companies, you know, period. You know, if it's able to help you. Now, some things, you know, cannabis might not help, right? I mean, some things, you know, people might need medicine for. And that's okay. But if it's able to help you, that's kind of where I'm like, you know, I'm kind of very big advocate for that because it's helped me, you know. Um, like I said, I have nerve damage in my face, and you know, it really does affect my net appetite when it hurts to eat really bad, right? Um, right. so it's like, if say if I didn't have cannabis, what would I use to uh, be able to eat to be able to get that thing away, right? I use a different thing or something, yeah, exactly. So, and you know, all those effects that they have you know, on your liver and the kidneys, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm really, really, uh, I'm lucky, you know, that weed's out there and that it's becoming more legal because it, it, it's important for people to have have access to it. You know, yeah, as a, as an option, I agree with you. Right, I agree with you. Um, I'm glad that 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 is a, a passion of yours, um, and you're you're willing to speak about that. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, if there was ever anything that comes up where where a bunch of people over a Zoom or anything, I wouldn't expect anybody to travel. But if like uh, if there was like a I just try to think of a good word, a coalition that came together to just to just chat and talk about uh, maybe a little bit more of the broader community involvement, not talking really business, anything. Um, if it, if it could help somebody's business by saying these people are here helping, doing whatever, that's awesome. But, you know, but mainly just to get together and throw ideas around about how we can talk to other groups or, you know, growing marijuana is, is a very, it's a very hard drug drug very hard plant to grow if you don't give it a little bit of love and Mm -hmm. that applies to everything else that we grow so i i thought about you know the like my local 4-h my my local scouts um with those root nerd things i'm i'm in the process of talking with him i'm probably going to grab a few of them and donate them to my son's second grade first grade class so they can germinate <laughs> seeds is sort of like a an instant gratification thing because instead of three or four days they got to wait for these seeds bug the teacher pull them off the wall fuckers germinate in 24 hours 
you know, and then the next That's day insane. or maybe the day after they can go and they can plant their tulips or their peppers or their tomatoes mm-hmm. and uh, having a place to, to get that, that excitement that not that I don't like teaching my kids things, but you know, ha- they're at right. school. They could learn that there. That <laughs> is something that's like a life skill. It, you don't just need it to is. balance a checkbook or be able to type being able to grow your own food or, or at least go out there and, and get your hands in the dirt. It's, it's an excitement that isn't taught in school anymore. Cause kids, the, it's, if they're if right. that's not nurtured it's, and they're not able to go outside, they're not going to have that excitement. Some kids don't get no. to go outside, and if they don't, the only place they can go is school. Getting them interested in outside, maybe getting their hands in the dirt. Maybe the school's playground sucks or something. You know, it's like might be the only opportunity for some of these children, or even fucking young adults to to do something like this so i may i may call on you and see if there's any scheduling that we could work out to um i I was thinking sometime in the fall you know trying to get a plan together not not doing it in the fall per se but getting a plan together to to potentially next like spring sort of launch like a a group on getting some of this involvement out in in our own communities but as this community you know it's not just not just you doing it it's it's right. everybody it's doing the, it you know you wouldn't have exactly. to make any all the material maybe somebody else is making the material you know or or maybe these ones are just posts here and there or something but let me stop rambling to you uh <laughs> no, i i do appreciate like your time uh I I really do hope you enjoyed it. I will be jumping oh, on and checking out your website a little bit more. Um, I've already entered in all your giveaways. Again, I'm a fucking collector. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I I really hope we can talk more again. Sorry for the scheduling conflict. And if you oh, ever yeah, want to no, do this again, just let me know. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I had fun doing it. Thank you for having me on in the first place. Uh, I yeah. really enjoyed you know, being on here to you know, talk about all the stuff that I have passion for, that you had passion for too, like equal passion, you know. Um, and yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm, I try to be very transparent. I try to share as much as I know out there just because everybody deserves to know how to do this kind of stuff, right? Um, right. So yeah, no, thank you so much for having me you know, join and stay and you know, talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. Um, and we'll talk soon, Nick. You too. Bye. Bye.